Hi, homeworthy. Welcome to my home. I'm Annie and this is the Villa Vallombrosa. Come on in. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Before today's episode, click the join button below to support all of the storytelling we do on this channel. Our growing community of members help to directly fund more videos so we can capture these extraordinary homes from around the world. So join today to receive early and exclusive access to new Homeworthy videos. I'm Annie Kelly, and here we are in the Hollywood Hills in a neighborhood called Whitley Heights, that's a National Historic District. And this is a historic house in a Tuscan Venetian style, believe, I mean, if you can imagine that, um, which is a bit of a combination, and um, which was built in 1929. And I'm basically a writer. I write on design and decoration, and I'm the author of about 10 books, I think, on design and decoration. The publisher's mostly with Soli. And um, with my husband, Tim, who's the photographer, we're interested in Mexico in particular. We're interested in modernism. We're interested in all sorts of different styles and periods and countries that this house is really, doesn't really reflect, but it's still very much a part of our life together. Well, we ended up here in this house because some friends owned it and they put it on the market and we lived nearby. And we came to the house a couple of times for parties and events and things. And, and in eventually we found it was for sale and um, we decided to buy it uh, just because it was such an unusual house. We actually didn't know um, much about the history of the house. That all evolved after we bought it and people started to give us information about who had lived here, who had rented it, who had built it. We really didn't have much idea. So it was an interesting process finding out the history. In the 20 years we've lived here, we haven't needed to do very much. In fact, it's um, probably about time for a second renovation. Uh, we bought it from the friends who'd actually done the first renovation and they, we bought it pretty much in, you know, all fixed up. And so there hasn't been much maintenance or anything. Um, we have a gargoyle on the front balcony that we had to replace, uh, <laughs> otherwise, um, a bit of, um, you know, the usual things that you have with a house. But otherwise, it's been pretty much trouble free. It's, uh, it's a great place to live. Working together with Tim on the books is, uh, it started off being a little more difficult than you might imagine because husbands and wives, you know, there's often a dynamic and you have to kind of work through that when you're doing a book together. And if you've, we're set, it's all sorted out now, but you know, we're, when you have, when you're sort of saying to your husband, well, are you going to photograph that? It can t be a bit like, are you going to take the trash out tonight? I mean, it's not the same thing, but it's like kind of domestic and you have to navigate between the domestic and the professional. But now we've got it all worked out and we share very similar tastes. There's almost nothing that we disagree on. In fact, I, I can't even remember anything we disagree on. And I think that's really important is to um, establish a kind of common ground when you're working with your, with, with your partner. And once you've done that, then um, generally it's smooth sailing. With our latest book, City of Dreams, Los Angeles Interiors, we, we work together a lot as well. Um, some of the pictures, um, particularly the introductory chapter, where we show the history of design and decoration in Los Angeles, we're already in Tim's archives. For example, he's photographed Tony Duquette, the decorator Tony Duquette, a lot. Um, there's some arts and crafts houses, there's Frank Gehry. Um, so that was kind of the easy part. But then we moved into, into kind of the body of the book and there's two main chapters. One is um, living with design and art, and that's really people, that's like artists and decorators, and we've got some really interesting people. And then the next section is sort of um, mid-century modern, because in Los Angeles, that was the really big 
design period was the mid-century modern architects and their designers. And a lot of people have houses and apartments from that period. For example, um, we have an apartment that Elton John lived in with his partner. And uh, that was decorated by Martin Lawrence Bullard. And that's in a mid-century modern apartment building. Welcome to the entry of, to the Villa Vallombrosa. It's actually fairly small and so are the stairs, but let me show you what happens when we get to the top. And here we are in the big sitting room. It's full of all sorts of things, artworks and, art and, and furniture and collections. This is a big Syrian armoire that we picked up at auction and it really anchors the space because it's so big. Inside we have a collection of just small art pieces and souvenirs and art books and just things that we've picked up along the way. And uh, it's a nice place to consolidate everything. When we bought it, it was completely empty. And instead of it sort of ruining it by doing the infill of cupboards and things, I bought a whole lot of black stuff from Ikea black cupboards from Ikea and assembled them inside the piece so that the, we didn't mess with it. We left it as it was. And anyway, it's worked out quite well. Then through here, we have the fireplace or what's really the ch chimney piece, strictly speaking. And this is a very strong feature in the house. And it's identified in a lot of books on the house that feature some of the original inhabitants and here we have right here a portrait of the photographer Baron de Meyer and he's see as you can see he's photographed in front of the in front of the fireplace here's a book on his work for people that aren't terribly sure about who he is or was but um, he was one of the founders of fashion photography and he lived here for a short time anyway moving through obviously we have some a collection of our books here's our latest book which is City of Dreams, Los Angeles Interiors. And then here's a, just a collection of uh, the Rooms to Inspire series I did with Tim and Litchfield Star, which features our house in Connecticut. And then the paintings are really just a collection of artworks that we found at auction, um, really to give the sort of historical feeling of the house, to make it feel like it's really a villa from another part of the world, which was the original intention of the architect. And whenever I work on a house, I always like to kind of follow the intention of the architect. This doesn't look like the house of a modernist, but it's, we kind of are modernists as well, but really we've done this because we feel it sits more harmoniously with the house to make it look like a kind of Italian villa or French, country house. These uh, sconces here are by um, French designers called Garoust and Bonetti and uh, they operated mostly in the 90s. They work separately now but um, they've become quite iconic as part of the period that they worked in. I love fabric and uh, um, luckily a lot of my friends do fabric and this is, a, this is Peter Dunham's fabric. He has a store on La Cienega called Hollywood at Home. And this is Carmen, his, um, his uh, what you call it, all-weather fabric, it's his, uh, which is great because it's a beautiful fabric and, it, and stains and things just wash off. It's the Sunbrella fabric in his line. And uh, this is from Robert Keim, who was a, this piece of fabric. He was a decorator in London and he's famous for his fabric line, which still exists. You can still buy that. And this piece here um, is from Martin Lawrence Bullard, and he's another designer in LA who also um, has a fabric line for himself and also with Schumacher. And this is Schumacher fabric here. And these are from a store called Hollyhock, Suzanne Reinstein, who sadly is no longer with us. And these are her June Street chairs. This is an Egyptian textile that we actually found in a flea market in Connecticut when we had a house there. And I found it on the lawn. 
And uh, happily, I think I was the only one interested. But it looks terrific because I realized we had the space for it. And then we hung the portrait, the uh, 18th century portrait over it. Most of our paintings are from the 18th century. This is this piece here. This is from uh, uh, the designer um, Tony Duquette. Tony Duquette was a decorator here in LA and this was from one of the auctions after he died. And I still have the sticker on it. And over here, this away, this is um, a harpsichord under here, um, which I won't lift up. This is a harpsichord from my mother, who was a musicologist, and she sent me the harpsichord. And this piece here is from Blackman Cruz, which is another really amazing furniture store in Los Angeles. So not everything came from auction. We did buy things from various stores as well. We intended this house to have the feeling, a European feeling because that was the intention of the architect to make it like a Mediterranean villa. And uh, so we kept, we tried to keep to that. And so we sort of brought in French and Italian period furniture, 19th, 18th century, some of it, and, uh, and, the, and the portraits just to feel, just to make it more of a villa feeling to, and um, which kind of is a sort of Hollywood tradition to establish some kind of fantasy. We use this room a lot with friends and um, we'll gather around the sofas here and uh, have served drinks. But then um, we generally have dinner parties in the courtyard, the outdoor courtyard. So I usually say to people, well, let's go out to dinner. So we have to go outside for, to dinner. Although we have a very small table in the front, which is a breakfast table, really. We use that for breakfast because it has a nice light in the morning. The house was built by Eleanor DeWitt, who you see here. She, and uh, uh, she's standing in front of the fireplace in this very room. Anyway, she built the house in 1929, right at the Depression. And uh, she didn't live here initially. She rented it out to a whole lot of Hollywood uh, costume designers and photographers and, and uh, right through the gamut of all sorts of interesting creative people. That's basically the story of the house. It's, it's in a neighborhood called Whitley Heights, which is a his national historic district. And it's um, a Spanish colonial style and uh, it's meant to be like a Mediterranean hill town. And all of the houses were designed with views over each other house. Our house, though, is a bit unusual because it's not Spanish like the rest of the neighborhood. It's a little bit more Italianate. And uh, the story is, is that Eleanor, who you see here, thought she was going to do a Spanish colonial house, but then she fell in love with Italy and she sent the architect to Italy to get some inspiration. So some of the front of the house um, it looks Italian. It almost looks as though it's from Venice, Italy, with the um, curved facade. Cecil Beacon visited this house, amongst many others, and uh, I found a reference in this book here when um, Cecil, Greta and Cecil, when Cecil Beaton had a big love affair with Greta Garbo, and uh, he came to the house and loved it. Um, he came to this house because Adrian, the costume designer in the 30s, was primarily doing all of Greta Garbo's costumes. So he was very keen to meet Adrian because he was hoping that Adrian would be a stepping stone so that he could meet um, Greta Garbo. And so I have it in this book when he came and how much he liked the house. And he did admit that this was the kind of house he'd love to have if he lived here in Los Angeles. <music> Okay, well, let's go outside now and we'll go out to the courtyard, to the dining table. And here we are in the enclosed outdoor courtyard. And here's the table, which we use practically all the time in summer. We don't eat inside at all because it's so lovely here with the fountain and the tropical greenery. It's a perfectly isolated, uh, picturesque kind of spot. And people in the past have used it as well. Adrian, the costume designer, he kept monkeys here and parrots, um, which we haven't quite followed in his footsteps. Uh, but uh, he took uh, Greta Garbo dined here. We have that in a memoir, 
when Adrian lived here. And here's the fountain, which is rather lovely to hear the sound when we're eating. The courtyard is, 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 is a very Mediterranean uh, architectural feature. And this courtyard is pretty much similar to quite a lot in Los Angeles because it's a lovely place to sit and be enclosed from the rest of the world. Generally, um, we like to serve maybe foods from all over the place. Mexican food is very popular here in LA. And quite often I have someone come, uh, there's a restaurant called Loteria that will come and, and serve and pre prepare the food for you know, quite lively dinner parties out here in the summer. And uh, we have a lot of fun out here. It's great. And sometimes we even host benefits as well for various institutions or book parties. You know, it's a great space for entertaining. I find that green plates look very good in an outdoor setting, particularly the cabbage ware. It kind of picks up from the green leaves around us. And so I like to do a theme of green and yellow and a bit of blue reflecting the sky. It's a great place to have fun with a table. Well, here's this amazing staghorn that we've had for years and years and years. And that's really become a feature of this courtyard. However, it was originally landscaped when we moved in. But over the years, it's kind of grown and kind of moved in different directions. But the basic sort of backbone of it is still here. Then a um, lot of its plants, one of the hard parts about it is that in winter, there's no sun, and in summer, in a lot of places, there's full sun. So I have to pick plants that can handle both hot, um, bright and sh shade, light and shade. And so that explains these like um, wonderful rubber plants. There's um, just the general kind of tropical feel of these, all these sort of, this is actually called California geranium and that can take both sun and shade. And uh, walking through hydrangeas, although they like the sun coming back, which is happening right now in this corner. Overlooking this courtyard is the main bedroom with the Juliet balcony, which is lovely because you can, you can look out from the bedroom. And through here is the door to the rest of the garden, which is basically a hillside garden and steps go up to various landings where we can have dinner in the winter where the sun hits because we don't have any sun down here. Sometimes actually, the way I furnished the house, people sometimes come and they say, oh, did you buy it like this? Because, uh, and I take that as a compliment because it means that the furnishings look so authentic and so accurate to the style of the house that they look like they've always been here. But actually, I really did have to start from, the, from really it's from scratch. I started from right from the beginning. Um, and I went to auction houses and antique shops in LA and just slowly put things together. And then eventually it, uh, it was interesting. I mean, it kind of is French, Italian with a bit of Syrian, but I think perhaps the common thread running through the house is there isn't anything new in it. Everything's apart from the fabrics. I think I mainly furnished the house. It's hard to remember because I've run everything by Tim. I don't think anything's come into the house without him having a look at it first. But it's been primarily my uh, direction, chiefly because that's what I write about when in the books that we do. I write about design and decoration. So, and I'm often influenced by the people who we talk about. And uh, sometimes if I've spent all day in their houses, I come back and think, oh, I, want, I need some drinks trays or I need some more footstools. And I think that's kind of how the house has evolved. And uh, Tim's gone along with everything. I mean, if he, didn't, if he doesn't like something, it doesn't come into the house. But, you know, it's primarily my direction, I think. So in the courtyard here on the left hand side, we have the sitting room. But on the right hand side, we have a small dining room for when the weather gets too cold. Follow me. In this room, we have art and sculpture and dinner. <laughs> we eat here when it gets cold and um, it's a nice cozy room and it's surrounded by various pictures. We have um, a couple of, we have a, a print here and a matching one. 
by an LA artist called Billy L. Bankston. We have a piece around the corner here which I'll hold up. This is a piece of sculpture by an artist who was born in California who's called James Brown. And it's, he's not the musician, it's James H.D. Brown. And we have quite a lot of work by this artist. Then this, by way of contrast, is a 17th century painting on wood, of um, probably done by a Dutch artist, as the Dutch were the painters, predominant portraitists of the 17th century. And then the table is set with a combination of antique and new china and glass. I set the table with reds and oranges and pinks because it's nice to have um, something, the colors kind of coordinating. That's, I kind of aim for um, similar colors when I do a tablescape, or on the other hand, uh, totally contrasting colors, a big mix. And outside, I like to do more colorful tablescapes because it's outside. But inside, because the walls here are orange, I'm trying to reflect the colors of the room as well and to make people feel more cozy, you know, more, it's a more intimate space here. Secretary or secretaire, which came from Tim's family. This was at a place called Coveney Manor in England, uh, in, uh, near Oxford. And uh, it was part of the manor and it may well have been made to fit the original house because it's quite old and on here we even have a medal this belonged to Tim's this is an uh, this is a OBE which is Order of the British Empire for Tim's grandfather <laughs> and then I have one from my grandfather which meant that he fought in Gallipoli as an Australian, which was a very famous battle against the Germans. So it's full of family memoirs and memories here. This is where the family, few family pictures and just personal things. Then here, these come, these again come from the decorator Tony Duquette, who Tim photographed a lot of his work and which is in a lot of books on his work. And uh, the mirrors came from Tony Duquette as well. And uh, this was his idea because the mirrors reflected the courtyard. This Chinese goddess of mercy came from a project I did. My first decorating project was a Frank Lloyd Wright house in Pasadena called La Miniatura. And um, we bought this for the house, the client and I. And uh, when she sold the house and left, she asked if I wanted it. And uh, since then, it's been really an important feature of this room because it's a very beautiful statue. I left the colors in the room, in both of the rooms, this room and the big sitting room, I left them the same as what they were originally designed as because the people we bought the house from, they really got it right. They really captured the spirit of the house in so many ways. So we've been very reluctant to change a lot of their ideas. I think one of the most important things when you buy a house is to look at the original intent of the architect. And if it's an arts and crafts house, for example, you try and put in a bit of arts and crafts furniture just to give it a sense of solidarity of how it just feels right. And you know it's pretty safe if you move, if you move in that direction. And with this house, we've moved in a kind of more um, traditional decoration because that's what the house kind of needed. This house was designed to be a villa in the Mediterranean and we've kind of tried to keep up with it. We've been a bit influenced by Mexico. We have a few Mexican paintings and a few Mexican pieces here and there. But that's pretty logical considering that we're so close to the border here in Los Angeles and so many of our books have been on Mexican design. Well, let's go up and look at the rest of the house. This is actually a three-story house because it's built into the hillside. And the main bedroom is really up the top here. So let's go. And so here we are in the main bedroom. Right here we have a Portuguese bed, which I got at auction from Christie's in London and furnished. These textiles are from Les Andiennes, which is a store in New York. And um, this framed embroidery came from Tony Duquette. 
And then on the wall behind is just a lot of personal artworks. And a picture wall is great to assemble all the bits and pieces that you've collected over the years. I have um, a family picture too, too, but this was a, this is a painting by Dan McCleary, an, a Los Angeles artist who's showing in New York right now. And he does beautiful, beautiful uh, still lifes. This is a painting of a great, great, great aunt of mine in Sweden done by, I believe her brother or uncle, I don't know exactly. I have a pair of these embroidery bits and pieces and these came from a Tony Duquette auction after his death. And uh, when, well, there was a big auction of Tony Duquette's work and that's where this, these have come from. And uh, then above the bed, there's another, there's a, paint, there's a painting up there by the artist I mentioned earlier, James Brown, James H.D. Brown, not the singer. <laughs> and uh, then just various pieces, um, a lot reflecting our interest in Mexico. These are uh, Spanish colonial pieces. This is a portrait of San Isidro, who's getting the angels to plow his fields so he can go to church. And that's a piece by um, another LA artist called Sister Corita. And uh, there's, the, there's the pair, the other pair for the Tony Duquette pieces. This is a um, Italian, uh, 18th century Italian chair that I got from New York. And um, everything is all kind of result of years of just collecting all sorts of bits and pieces. The chair over there came from New York. That's French, probably 18th, 19th century. As I've said, um, we're trying to get a period feel to the house so that it fits in well with its style. With a gallery wall, some people say that it's best to lay all the pictures out on the ground before you hang the pieces because it gives you a much better idea of how it's going to look. However, we, we just threw, thrown it all in because it's, we keep buying things and so there's always an extra corner. We put something in one corner, we put something in another corner. And, you know, you can see we've still got room for more. The chandelier, actually, um, I put the chandelier in to replace one. The original, the people we bought the house from, they rather creatively had a chandelier there. And I thought that was a wonderful idea because it's kind of a fantasy and you can see it straight through as you come into the room. And so we put it there and it's been there ever since. And then here is the balcony, the little Juliet balcony, where we can look out onto the courtyard below and maybe look at some of the hillside. This is a Spanish colonial print bought in Pueblo in a Mexican town. The wallpaper was already here but I was told it's Clarence House, which is a wallpaper company. However, I think it's discontinued. In a way, I consider myself a maximalist, but that's really because I'm working with the style of a house. If I had a mid-century modern house, for example, I might furnish it quite differently, very spare. It really depends. But I think in a way, when you've spent a lot of time visiting other people's houses and going to auctions and antique stores and antique fairs. I think after a while, it's a bit irresistible to fill your house with what you've found. Tim and I met in Australia, where I'm from, and we moved to Los Angeles, uh, partly because when you're from two different countries, you have to make a decision. And um, LA was really interesting at that point. Um, Frank Gehry was doing some really interesting buildings and Tim started working for him. And uh, our careers were pretty much separate. I'd, I'd trained as an artist, and so I was painting and exhibiting, and Tim was uh, a freelance for many of the magazines, like House and Garden and House Beautiful and Architectural Digest, all of the LA and international magazines. And then eventually, um, I think the first book was really on Mexico, and most people do books on subjects they actually know about. Well. We do books to find out about countries and places and cities, and which is a wonderful voyage of discovery. And so far we've done about four books on Mexico and we're planning another one because it's a wonderful country to explore. But that's along the theme of also modernism and design and decoration that uh, are our enthusiasms that we share. 
We're also, um, the, another book coming up is uh, a Frank Lloyd Wright in California. Uh, so, you know, we'll do fairly traditional books as well. I think what attracted us to this house was its unusual layout, the way you come in through the front door, and it's a very small entry, and you come up through the stairs, which are very small and tight, and then suddenly the house, to, the, the sort of space explodes into the big sitting room that we're in now with what's basically a 20 foot ceiling. In fact, it's hard to measure because we've tried putting the tape up, but it's at least 20 foot high. And then you walk through and in the middle is a outdoor courtyard that's completely enclosed and uh, with a fountain and a fireplace, very kind of LA Spanish colonial, but it also has an Italian at feel. And so this was all very livable for us. And upstairs, a good main bedroom with high ceilings and um, a great front terrace that we can entertain on as well. So it was really the style, the unusual style, the sort of reference to Venice, Italy. The, it's actually, the style is called Venetian Gothic. And uh, pretty much soon after we bought it, we um, got it designated as a historical cultural monument of the city of Los Angeles. I know it's a mouthful, but we have a plaque and uh, um, partly because of all the interesting people who lived here and the architectural style. Well, before we finish, I'd like to take you outside to another outdoor space that we use a whole lot and it's been very important for us. This is a very comfortable spot for us out here. In fact, it's a, a great space to entertain friends and especially in the summer. And from here we can see the front facade of the house and we can see the greenery all around us. And we can also in the distance, we can see the trees from the park around the Hollywood Bowl. It's nice to have drinks out here before we go into the house, especially because we like to admire the front facade of the house because it is so historic and, and unexpected. And so it's a great place to have people for drinks. One of the most unusual features of this house is its curved facade because it's um, most unusual, as I said, a very unusual feature of the house. And um, it has this balcony with the gargoyle, which we had to replace. So it has the balcony with the gargoyle, but you can see that unlike many other houses, you can see, you can take, you can see the curve up, in the, up on the roof line. And the house itself has never been painted. The surface is actually gunite, which is a kind of concrete which is used for swimming pools. It's not really used very much anymore, but it's great for us. And it gives the house a nice old fashioned look. This is the most Venetian part of the house because it has that kind of Venetian, the window has a Venetian point to it. And it's like a long exclamation mark with the balcony overlooking the street. And in fact, the front facade of this house really has only three windows. And these almost don't really even qualify because they're actually French doors. That's what makes it probably one of the most unusual houses in Los Angeles. In fact, when people come to visit, I say, well, you'll know our house because it's like no other house you've seen before. And the hanging light here above the front door, which is very useful, it doubles as a spot for the birds because at the bottom, quite often the birds make their nests there. So it's kind of rather charming to come home to the cheep cheep of little baby birds. <laughs> home is always a refuge, I think, from the outside world. I think it's, um, it's great to have a place you can come back to and feel private and feel secure and um, and where you can entertain your friends. You know, a home is a place where you can enjoy life. And I think that's the way you should decorate it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content, shopping guides, and so much more.